Okay. One of the features of Java 9 uh, was the major feature of Java 9 was introduction of modules. Um, so before we start, I like to ask you the question: What is the use of packages, and why we use packages? Uh, basically, uh, packages is a group uh, of rela uh, related to class in Java. Okay. And then when you group, right, we give different kind of access specifier, right? Right, right. That public, private, protected, mm -hmm. and uh, default, right? So thereby we control like uh, what are the the children or you know, related classes, enumerations, interfaces. Those can be used uh, whether outside the package. Those are available to be used outside the package in other packages. And then uh, we can able to use that. And also when we distribute our Java application, we generally create a Java archive. And then I can add the Java archive as we have read through Maven or any dependency manager like Maven, like Gradle or SBT. Or previously, we have IV. Um, so those are basically help us to you know manage those dependencies, right? And then within that particular jar file, what are the packages were there? Whatever you know, public out of the package, I can able to use that, or I can inherit classes or interfaces i can provide my own definition provided they are either with the scope public or protected okay so similarly uh, then we need to understand a few things like why modularization why the need of modules are there why the module in java right what is the need of module in java that you find how can I define a module? How can I use a module? Right. Let's see. Clearly, when we uh, distribute our application, right? Say, for example, previously we used to develop Swing application. And sometimes when you create a binary or native distribution for to be that to be run because Java is cross platform, right? What makes Java cross platform is uh, JVM, right? Java runtime. So if you have the Java runtime, then we can able to run applications there, right? Wherever they install. So maybe I created a Java application, which is like a GUI application, GUI, and that is I developed with a swing. And I don't want the user to be, you know, deploy. My application uh, along with Java, I can want to distribute the Java. Or in a machine, I want to, to run any kind of backend or server side logic. I require maybe a JBoss, Tomcat, Web Logic, Web Sphere kind of a application server. And to run them, I also need to install the JDK. Right. So in JDK, also you know manages uh, the you know Java's different packages which we are used as a standard library or internal packages right which we are used are kind of comes in a rt.jar this will be find under lib directory of the gre when you install that and that particular rt.jar has been previously uh means very much big because it has lots of uh, different classes which you may or may not be using over the period of time. For example, there are like RMI, Corva, those are like old specifications which are there to communication of interprocesses or application, but those protocols are currently fall out of use and those are not required. So lots of you know code that are there. And also the internal classes are also be used. Uh, there is no restriction, right? So previously, uh, when we don't have the base 64 module 
as a standard library, we used to use the Sun internal base 64 and do the base 64 encoding into our Java application. So there is no restriction, right? Um, that you cannot use the internal Sun APIs. Those are basically there from the Java one. And you know, if it is like public, you can use it. And if you don't put it as a public, then we can, they cannot be uh, too restrictive. Uh, we cannot use that. So, so basically the problem with the public is there is no separation between the internal implementation and the public APIs. Public, you mentioned anybody can use your internal implementation if you wanted to. And then if uh, also like a, we wanted to do like a fail fast, right? If any particular dependency or classes are not there into my class path, uh, maybe we wanted to figure this out as a compile time, really what we do. But any kind of you know, dependency that is provided on the runtime, right? And then only a certain feature of my application has been using that, and that particular dependency may be removed from my application server, or maybe removed from my base JDK and it is somehow been corrupted, then I'm going to only finding that out in the runtime when the particular pathway of the code is using that particular library, which may be missing. And then I'm being encountered with an error and my application fails there. Now, similar to the concept of packages, right? Uh, which is basically grouped together, similar kind of classes, etc. So modules now is a one level above to that. It basically groups together uh, similar use packages. It basically grouped together out of your distribution, all the packages into a one single instance that is like a module. As a part of Java 9 onward, what they happen is that they have made Java 9 java jdk itself and its old library itself into module and they gain uh, considerable restrictions of the internal apis which are not cannot be restricted otherwise previously internal api like for example i'm given the base 64 used to be available by all right not to see uh what are the number of modules that are there in the java that is we can run this command that is java.list.module. Basically, go to the command point. I can type, I can go to the CPD. Go to the desktop. Then I can type in. Java list modules. When I put that, it shows the what is the list of modules are there into my JDK, right? So now to better manage the data dependency between the modules or between the classes, they have put into a different one stable above. These are all the packages inside that. So if I, you know, go through this list of packages, so they have like, you know, separate out the internal APIs into a separate modules, right? Those are related to virtual machine compiler and other things. And also they are now uh, differentiating that different feature, which are currently in a incubation stage they are not available as a standard api they can be changed over period of time so they have marked those specific classes or packages under a model called incubator so here we can see right on the list there is this base module which is known as java dot base and module can also have like a version number but they have put out here so Java dot base being the base module, it is similar to your Java dot lang package, which you don't need to, you know, include into your program, but it is just automatically included. 
So in case we are using module into our programming, so we wanted to modularize our framework, our application, our code, our libraries, then there by default java.base can be integrated. So now here we can see like all the you know desktop or UI related classes are one. Logging related classes are going into separate places. Similarly, network related classes are now grouped together into a net and then within that HTTP protocols that have been put into different. Similarly, the SQL related classes are now put into packages rather put into SQL and then the row set manipulation put into separate package. So that help us better, you know, uh, manage these things. Now you can also see the names of the packages indicate which are the public, uh, you know, packages are there. So these are all public packages, which is as part of the standard library Java that you can use in our code base. Now, whatever, you know, related internal to the JDKs, those are, you know, separate out. Like HTTP server, hotspot agent, dynamic linking for to C++, cryptographical implementation, compiler, character sets, accessibility, debug attachment, those are separate out. And then again, they further, you know, uh, internalize some of the APIs which are related to and which are not available to us. So these are separated out. So they better can manage and move forward this. So then they can have like a similar package which is there for Java management and there is a different package for Java JDK management. Okay. So there are how the packages are being defined. Now, if I, you know, move this packages list, I can see this, there are like total 71. So what I did is I basically can, you know, take these packages, then I can say more modules.txt and I then have a list of this available and I can count how many of them are available in the current JDK. And this also helps us uh, the Java speed up releases. Now they can, you know, group uh, deprecated methods, etc. And they can easily group them together into a module. And there on later on, they can, you know, restrict who can use the particular module. They can restrict the module usage, the particular package usage. So it is currently 71. So at the release of Java 9, there were like 84. So there we can see there are like number of 12 or uh, such modules or 13 such modules has been dropped over a period of time. So only rule that the compiler will enforce when you use the module, you should not have cyclic dependency. That means the module A is depending on module B and module B is say depending on module A. So then that uh, both has this kind of dependency or they have like a transitive cyclic dependency. A may be depending on B, B may be depending on C and A also depends uh, on C, right? So in that case, the cycle is formed, then that particular compiler is not able to resolve this because when the modules have been resolved, it is the independent modules dependencies are figured it out. So at the compile time, that compiler has the, all the information. And if you wanted to use any such packages where that particular models are not been uh, available for us to be used outside the package, just like it's maybe public, it need to be protected to be used outside, not private in the sector. So here we can also see how we can use or define our own module. And thereby, we, how can we restrict some packages to be used outside, which may be internal to my application or internal to my implementation. Okay. So that's why the modularization is being used. And let's now look into how the modules are there. How can I create a module? So what is a module? It's basically a collection of packages, which may have different data. It may have also resources that mean uh, CSV files, XML files, JSON files, images, etc. also can be part of a module. Uh, so basically it's a full applications you can modularize. 
or within the application, uh, you can have different packages, and those packages you can you know restrict how that particular package can be used further. Now, when one module depends on another module, uh, so how you use the module? Let's first see an example. How can you define a module? Okay. So generally, say so this is my application. This is a Maven application, right? And if I close everything out, so I have some classes, etc., and I have my dependencies defined. Now, apart from that, when I use the pom.xml, I basically put uh, what is my artifact ID, group ID, and version ID. Similarly, to define my module, I have to add one class that is known as module-info.java. What is this model dash info dot Java explain is explain what is the uh, is this model is depend on any other third party module? If so, what are the more packages they wanted to be used? Then uh, basically module name they wanted to use, not packages, but when this module wanted to be used by any other module, that means somebody wanted to use this module, I can explain or I can state. Out of these packages, like there may be seven packages. I have two packages, util and <coughs> MPL and the base package, right? So I can choose to export all of the packages, or maybe I can hide some of the packages that are in the module. So that's what module info describes. So how the module info start with? It has a, like a keyword, which is named as module, but these keywords are only relevant for our module info.java these keywords are not relevant for any other java classes so here just like i'm saying that we have seen that uh, on the base modules right java dot base this is like a base module correct so in the base module i don't need to explain this i don't have to you know include this java or base it is included just by default just like our default package get included that is java.lang okay so that we don't have to mention so we use the keyword requests requests then i mentioned what is my particular other models i wanted to use and those modules and define what are the classes of what are the packages actually been exported out. So when I say use requests, I only implement the module name. So after module, what is the name? So here I'm given my module name is a com dot learning mate. And then if anybody want to use this module, they will use module their module name. Then they will say requests com dot learning mate. They don't want to mention the individual packages are there within the com dot learning mate, but they only use the module name. Okay, and from here I can now choose. Okay, which packages I wanted to export. So out here, say maybe I wanted to export the base package. So I mentioned com dot learning mate. So base package get exported out. I have to choose to export out the util package. So util package get exported out, not the implementation package. The implementation I will like to be hidden so that I'm not going to choose to export. So we define a model. We basically define a model using model manager. What is the model does? It does two things. It says what are the other models this model is depend on. And then it also state, okay, out of my current model, what are the packages will be available for outside use? Those are mentioned as a exports class. Okay. And then if I don't put any model, then that is like a default model. If I don't give any model, that is like a default model, and there is like a without name model that is there. So definition of module, as I mentioned, now this module.info, where this module.info will be there, it will be under your SRC, then your Java, underneath that, it's going to be placed there. And what is mentioned that I already explained, it has a like a request, it has a like a export. Okay, fine. So that way I have created this module. Now how I'm going to distribute a module, right? 
the same like uh, what he used for maven right so first of all where this particular module.info located is it's located under the src main java in the same path we have to place there and then how you can create a module out of that i can use the different uh, life cycle tasks that uh, we have so let me first clean uh, the maven build i choose the target to clean it so it get cleaned okay then what i'm going to do i'm going to just compile this and you'll create all the dot plus files there and if you can see under target it is under classes it comes up and also within the same uh, classes of the root folder it also copied over the module in for java that is we have under java so it has been compiled now what i can do i can need to create a package so by default the package what is going to be created is a jar packaging right so in java archive going to be created now then within the java archive what i can do i can navigate to this target folder and within the target folder i will see that there is like a modular java 1.0 snapshot it is created as per the version number that you have given out here so what i can do i can go inside the terminal and i can simply put jar dash f file name i'm at the under the target folder so within that the particular jar i find there i use the switch dash t what it does it basically describe the particular jar file what is the particular jar file do consist of so here you can see right so jar file is basically read the module info dot class and basically describe that as we again look into module info java i have only mentioned i've never mentioned java dot base because this is by mandated being imported or requests so this request is automatically added so i don't need to mention that then what other packages i'm exporting i'm exporting java utils and then i'm exporting java form dot learning mate okay so now this jar has been created now if i wanted to share normally what you need to do is whatever you know jar i've created whatever distribution i create i need to put this distribution in an artifact location or any kind of public artifactory right where my distributed artifacts are stored that is the jar will store so normally in case of maven what you can do we can you know use the install command so what is the install command does it's you know whatever you know compiled uh, port then it creates a package and it also place the package in a particular folder location and that particular folder location becomes my local repository okay so if i can see that it basically export it build and after build what is happened this is comes and the jar is created under the target folder from the target folder it is placed under my username and within that username so if i can go to the c drive i have users a username now underneath i see a dot m2 this has been the local repository right uh, say repository now what does my package name out here is a com learning mate right so it will be coming as com then it's going to have learning mate and within that i have a, like a module name that i mentioned in the pom.xml artifact name that is modular java so modular java will be the folder underneath that particular folder i will see there is my version number that i mentioned out here the same version number i'm going to be seeing out here and then i'm going to find my jar file is mentioned whichever i created that has been stored so now it is in the local repository right and then i can create another project and use this jar file right 
So now when you're going to be, so I define my module, I said two packages are usable outside this module and by default the, our java.base has been already be included. Okay. So that been there. So that how can you define a model? Now the usage path, if I wanted to use the module, now what going to happen? So using the other module. So, so if I'm, so the module path, there is now a module path been added. So basically it's going to look for the other module by reading the module info of Java. So your module is only activated or the module path is only built and the other module is try to resolve by looking into that provided that particular module has been available to your local repository or it may be downloaded from remote repository and now installed into your local repository so from where it's going to be try to resolve right so then what i need to do obviously i need to put module.info.java there i have to mention okay i wanted to use com.learningmate and then the com.learningmate packages whichever i have exported i can use in that particular classes okay so let's quickly see another application which have opened into the second version right so again i have here like uh, i call it the package name com.learningmate.client and here i put module info.java right so what i can do now here in the dependency uh, in the form dependency what i mentioned in the form dependency i mentioned that okay i am being depending on this particular you know normal dependencies it may be a modular dependency it may not be modular dependency but anyhow i say that okay you use this java jar right using well, dependency and i have also mentioned what is the version number i'm going to be using out of that okay so it added that to the class part so if it has been added to the class path, then I can obviously import that uh, public classes. I can import their, uh, call their methods, etc. right? But also have included a dependency for logging that is SLF4J, simple logging framework for Java. And I have used their APIs and also I've used their implementation. That is, I'm using logback for that. Okay. So now in the module.info, as I have a dependency on org.slf4j, I don't have to mention the package name, only I have to mention the module name, right? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be removing the second requirement, that is com.learningmate, okay? Then I come to my module class, and say in the first package, first application, what I had is I had a particular helper interface, which is having let's say arithmetic helper interface, it takes two number and make a sum out of it, right? And also within the implementation class, what we had is we had one implementation for the sum, another implementation for the multiply. Okay. And then I have like another method that is Fibonacci, whatever. And then inside that I have a one method to create a new instance of the helper IMPL. But here I'm just mentioned the type that will be returning will be helper. Okay. So now I have done all. In our case, the dependency on module dot client right so have i been not been you know just included only the dependency in the class path what happened is my code will get compiled okay there will be no error anything but in case of when you adding the particular module you have to ensure that now i cannot access the fibonacci dot this neither i can you know do the helper dot this anything i cannot do right so what i need to do is now I'm back to the Maven, and here what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to clean everything. 
and let's see the clean gate successfully done then i'm going to be go ahead and i'm going to be start doing the compilation so the module feature is works at the compile time right so this compiler plugin will say okay I'm not able to finding those symbols and it also complain okay your package com.learningmate.impl is not visible similarly your com.learningmate.util is not visible now what is mean by this visibility it mean by this visibility is that I have not included when I mentioned in the module.info I have export these two out right so then i'm saying that okay this is my module and if you wanted to use these two packages you are welcome to use that but in that case when i'm using it at least i have to mention in the module info of the class in which i'm using the another module that okay i required this com dot learning mate right so that means when I mention that I record com dot learning mate, then these two packages, whatever inside these two packages, which are public methods, are now be able to access. Now again, I go back. What I changed from the last time in the client is another model that is using that. I have now able to run hopefully application when i'm you know calling the methods on fibonacci that's been in the main util directory and then i'm getting an instance of a helper and i'm calling the sum method right let's now try to run the bomb.xml i'm going to first clean it out so whatever the past classes are going to be removed then I'm going to just simply do the compilation. Now the compilation is successful because not only the first package mentioned, the first model mentioned, okay, these two packages are available to use, but when I'm going to be using them, I'm going to not going to be mention the each package name, rather I'm going to mention the module name. So what this module name com.learning is coming for? Com.learning is coming, what you have given in your base model name out here. So when I say I'm going to need this, that means by default, all the classes that are out here will be available for use. Okay. So I have to mention that. Likewise, I mentioned, okay, I'm going to be using ORG SLF4J. So though I have added that is a you know class path dependency, but as I have enabled module by adding module info.java, so then they need to be explicitly you know state that I am going to be needing this module, and then all the classes within the module that is the logger and log factory, jelly whatever we are using we are now able to use, and I am going to be able to see those outcome of my calculations right either the sum or creation of the Fibonacci number series. So you can now see the output. Okay. So that being done. So we have understood the two keywords. One is requests. Oh, that means one model saying that I required you, and the other model says, okay, I'm a model, I have this class packages I wanted to export out. So then whoever is having the required command call, they can only use those packages which have been exported out. So it's like a handshake between the two applications using model, and there is a more restriction we can put that, okay, here, if you can see, normally in normal Java, what happens is your helper.impl even is a public. Now, if I try to use that, but I have not included that, I'm simply just put helper.impl 
and I just simply put, okay, let me try to create an instance of it. If not, let me create an instance of it, even if I enable this, I'm going to simply go clean it. And then I'm going to be go for compilation. And what happened in the compilation that it will not able to resolve the symbol. Now it say package.com.impl is not visible. What do you mean by not visible? Because we have not include that into our export statement, right? So have we, you know, include that into our export statement? Let's do that. So I'm going to export the implementation part of it. I can put running mate and I put impl, and then obviously I need to compile and then let me do the install. It will do the compilation and then packaging and then the install the version. And now I'm going to just simply do a clean. And now I'm going to be compile. And I'm going to find that the compilation is successful. And I can also now run. I can also even the root method let me recompile the code i don't have to do that because id is automatically doing the compilation and just to showcase i have to update the compilation code and i just want to call the multiply method and let's see whether the multiply method get called so it was not working this line even you know just to mention the class name was not allowed the class object creation was not allowed unless the particular package which contains a class is actually exported out of your current model. Okay, when it is exported out, you are free to use. If not, even if your class is public, that you cannot use. So what do you understood by this? So public class interfaces are only accessible if they are exported out into the module import or Java. Public alone doesn't allow the access. So even if I have a public method, which is normally works before, and it's not going to be able to do that now, unless it is explicitly stated that it will be available to be accessed outside that. And then and then only I can access them. Okay. And this check is actually done in the compile time. It doesn't wait for the runtime to be discovering this. It is done in the compile time first. So in the compile time, it's trying to build that dependency graph of the modules, and then it's able to do that. Okay. Few other things to the model that we can do is we can export out the modules to a specific client module. So now when you say export, I can create a third application. I can also import the particular module and whatever you know packages within that is there, I can easily use them. But to further restrict that, say, okay, say there is like a client one, client two, I only wanted to allow it to client one, then I'm going to say export, rather exports whatever the you know i need to put within this particular module info so it will be exports and then within that exports i'm going to say okay this particular package is exports out but export out to a specific package that is the client it's not going to be exported out to the all that so there is another level of Restriction, I'm going to export all the packages that is defining the module info, but only I'm going to export this package out of the module only to a specific other modules. Now, there is like an implicit dependency. So let's understand this. 
to say for example i have like a module analytics i have a another module that is caliper Maybe I can give some other example. Okay, see, I say, say data model, that is my module name, right? Then I say my data model is EIS, Education Information System, specific sub module, that is the it file. Okay, now from this module, what I'm going to do. I'm going to be exporting packages out. The com dot page dot data model. And then from the EIS, I'm going to state require, right? That's what all we are seeing out here that okay i want to say i want to be request this okay so i going to be requests on dot learning mail so let's just you know here i don't need to mention the package name all i need to mention the data model data model i have mentioned and then i going to say okay i want to be exporting additional package Form dot learning mate data model dot EIS and then the eight five module I'm going to only say requires data model right and then I wanted to use any of the classes or any of the packages out of this it will not work because sorry here I'm not included e data model here as i mentioned eis right so what happened out here if i wanted to use any of the you know data models out of any of the classes or functions or any of the interfaces in you know, etc out of the data model package it will fail because here when i say require eis then the access is only going to be provided to the export EIS model. Okay. So then to mitigate that, I don't have to again it say require data model. So only way to resolve this, then I have to again explicitly say require data model. But this EIS is, should be having the data model dependency already defined. So in case of doing that, what one can say it is say transitive. That means if any module which is imported my module so this package will be available to that and any other other module which is exporting the eis so that means now in the fy module i'm going to get the both the packages eis as well as data model so that is the implicit dependency graph is also can be resolve without explicitly mention that okay i will requiring this particular module again and again and again okay now so basically what we have to recap we wanted to say that okay is public is not good enough public plus you need to have minimal export then you can use things outside the module Right? And then you can use it. If you wanted to closely restrict who can have your packages to be used, you can then use export my package name to this particular module name. So that particular module can be able to use that, not anybody else. Or you want to say, okay, it can be exported exported out to any immediate module which is including my class my module as a main requirement and then any subsequent 
other module is importing this, then they will be transitively be available. They have, don't have to explicitly mention the base module name as required. Okay. Now you can access the class both as a runtime as well as on the compile time. Okay. So when you use the class access on the compile time, that is generally done by the compiler. Okay, so let's see. So then, in that case, what happened? We can use the other two keywords that are we can be used in the module info dot Java that I going to be make this whole module be available at the runtime by using reflection by opening all the packages that is mentioned there within that particular module or i can choose to make a particular mod package be available only at the runtime so that's about your module so last few minutes we can discuss if we have any specific questions. Any question, guys? Is the concept of module is clear to you guys? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what you understanding? What you mean understood by module? Uh, so a module groups together related packages. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. then it also can control what are the packages can be grouped together not only and what are the packages grouped together and available to outside so it is kind of a restriction on top of what we have on the public public plus export means that particular package related classes interfaces enums are available outside okay okay sir then comes why you're going to be using modularization right so instead of why you use the modularization to reduce the amount of code that we going to be stricter uh, you know access control if you wanted to implement right but here we are wanted to hiding the implementation logic right and that we can hide using modular so anybody who is developing a framework right so framework has some bit just like a JDK, which are available outside as a standard API and which is internal implementation. So if anybody wanted to hide the internal implementation, they can choose not to mention the package name into the module dash input or Java, then those packages will not be available even if that particular dependencies or package is made public. Okay, So that will help them to better control just like a JDK, we have seen the JDK has now grouped together different modules into different parts, different classes into different parts together. And also they have control over which modules are available at the compile and runtime. Okay. And then those models can be only used. Maybe those models having like even module, but they have like an internal and then they can further restrict, okay, this internal modules can be only used, say, java.management. So here in the java.management, you have something that can be internally used. It cannot be used from outside. So they can use the export and then to, and then actually control whichever is they are not allowing outside to, right? Right, sir. 
another thing we we have understood that there may be the module a this kind of a kind of a situation when the module a data model is inherited into module eis is been required and then eis is required in eight five data model right right so there we can you know use the transitive keyword so that we don't need to again repeat require data model because it will be very cumbersome to write all of that right so that we don't need to if we use the transitive the other two thing was that okay i have a data model and i can add open right so all the packages that is mentioned are available to everyone or i can mention this as a compile time guide i can mention this using opens that is not available on the compile time sorry it is only available in the run time okay that is using the java reflection okay so that's the final piece on the java 9 uh so let us stop the recording for now we don't have any further questions